All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to call this section 6.2. It is section 6.2, um, the definite integral. <clears throat> um, but before we get to the definite integral, so we now know an integral, an indefinite integral is finding an antiderivative. A definite integral is going to have a completely different meaning. Um, it's going to seem a little weird at first, but they're going to connect. I promise they're going to connect. Before we do the definition, we need to um, talk about what a Riemann sum is, though. So in the last couple of sections, we've done some adding up of rectangles. And whenever we added up rectangles, we always made sure the rectangles were the same width. And then we picked the height at either being, you know, the left or the right. Uh, later on, we'll go to the middle. Um, but we don't really want to get tied to that. We really want to just say, hey, why would we tie ourselves to always using one side for the endpoint when we know the answer is going to be too small? Or we know the answer is going to be too big. So Riemann, this guy Riemann decided, you know what? We're not going to get stuck. That we're going to do whatever we want. So he defined his sum basically to just be. It's called the Riemann sum. It's the summation of a bunch of rectangles. R for Riemann, P for partition. Um, we're going to add up a bunch of rectangles. The width of every rectangle, delta x, is going to be different this time. So notice it's a delta x k. It's going to change. And to find the height of the rectangle, we're going to get to pick any point in the rectangle we want. Could be the left, could be the right, could be anywhere in the middle. But we'd, in essence, if we were really doing this for real, we're not because we're going to make you do it a certain way. But if you were going to use an estimate, you would want to pick the best estimate, right, for what looks like it fills up the most area. Okay. So all a Riemann sum is basically saying is we're going to add up a bunch of rectangles, but we can make as many rectangles as we want. We can make all their widths different, and we can pick their height to be whatever we want. W is just um, any value in my little region that I'm adding up. The partition of a Riemann sum, a partition is any decomposition of an interval into subintervals. So we're just going to break up our interval from A to B into lots of rectangles is basically what we're going to do. Um, and just for definition purposes later on, we need to know um, this um, terminology is that the norm of a partition is notated by this P with the two lines around it is the largest of the delta X's. So in other words, we're going to have this many rectangles, which everyone has the biggest width. That's the norm. And what we want to do is we want to make the norm smaller and smaller and smaller. That's ultimately how we're going to uh, figure it out. So this is really just kind of a definition that's going to help us later, but we are going to do a problem with it or two. So this is just an example. They would give you this function. Okay. So we are graphing eight minus one half X squared. So let's see, this is an upside down parabola moved up uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. Um, let's see, just to make it precise, if I go eight minus one half X squared equals zero, just to find that things one half x squared equals eight x squared equals 16 so we're going to cross it one two three four so i get this little uh parabola here but notice we're going to find the area between one and six so one will be right here but six is actually over here okay now. so it's got some uh negative heights and when we do these areas, it is true that anything above the x-axis is going to be positive area. Anything below the x-axis is going to be negative area because of the negative height that goes along with it. And so to do this partition, to add this up, basically what would happen is, um, my phone's listening to me here. Basically what would happen was they would get, they would tell us how to break it up. So what we're seeing here is, um, my endpoint, so 1, 1 1.5, 2.25, 4.55, 5, and 6. So if I were to draw, let me just draw a little better picture of this so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so we'll make that my 1, and then uh, 1 1.5, and then 2.25, and then 4.5 is actually over here, right? 4.5, 5, and six. So now we have the widths of each one of the rectangles. And then what those W's are is they're just telling you how to find the height, right? So W1 is one. So when I try to find this is rectangle one, this is rectangle two, this kind of weirdness here, whole thing here is kind of rectangle three. It's a little bit weird with the positive negatives. That's pretty unusual. 
and then my other rectangle is four and five. The Ws are just telling me how to find the height. So to find the height of the first rectangle, I plug in one. To find the height of the second rectangle, I plug in two, which is in there. The third rectangle, I plug in 3.5. So those are telling me, the Ws are just telling me which heights to put in. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with this in my example. You can see one in the book. There's one little practice problem. But really all you're doing is plugging in each one of those heights. So notice the first rectangle has a width of 0.5. The second rectangle with the 0.75, third one, uh, what's that? 2.25, 0.5, and then one. So those are all my widths. And then to find the height of that first rectangle, you just plug one into that. You plug two into that. You plug 3.5 into that, and then add them all. All right, there's probably like one example, maybe two in the homework, I can't really remember, uh, just to give you an idea. Um, but basically the idea is if this were a real problem, not just made up for us here, we would want to do this in such a way that we're getting the best area possible. So why are we doing this? Well, because of a definite interval. So this is, again, it's going to take two days to make all these connections, so kind of bear with it. So this is the definition of a definite integral, okay? A definite integral, let me just get rid of that so you can see it. Um, is an integral symbol that has what we call limits on it, A and B. Uh, we've done this before, and we know that this means just find an antiderivative, okay? But now, when we put those limits on, it's going to mean something completely different for a bit, and then we're going to connect them, okay? But for today, it's going to mean something completely different. So when I put those limits on my integral, basically, that's what Riemann said he's going to call his sum. So notice that notation there is just Riemann sum, but with a limit as the partition approaches zero. So remember the partition is the biggest, or the norm of the partition, sorry, is the biggest rectangle. So if the biggest rectangle's width is approaching zero, getting smaller and smaller, it means we're getting more and more rectangles. So if you go back to the infinite amount of rectangles we did at the beginning of this chapter, it's the same basic idea, just we have infinitely many rectangles. So Riemann said, my sum with a limit is equal to this area, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. He just defined it like that. It seems a little bit weird. Why would he pick that symbol? Well, you'll see why uh, in the next lesson, okay? Um, so what it basically means, when you see this little thing right here, it's just asking you to find the area under the curve from a to b. That's what it's asking you to do. For today, we're gonna do that using geometry, no calculus, we're gonna use the symbols, no real calculus but it's just finding the area under a curve from A to B. So it's saying, hey, if you see this question, area under the curve from A to B, it's the same as adding up a bunch of infinite rectangles. We're not really gonna add up rectangles. You don't have to do that anymore. Uh, well, we might a little bit, but for today, we're gonna have nice little geometric pictures we can do. But before we do a couple of examples, there's a couple of facts. Um, if you switch the limits of those integration, the A and the B, if you switch them, you get the opposite answer. Okay, so normally when we find the area under a curve from A to B, it's like this area. It's just by definition, we go left to right. But if someone tells you to go B to A, then it's going to be the opposite, whatever answer it was. It's kind of like bringing the thing underneath the x-axis. Okay. Um, and then it is also a fact that the integral from A to A is equal to zero because there is no area under that curve. Okay. Um, and then just a little theorem to put it all together. Um, it's not going to mean as much uh, today as it will in the next lesson, but it says if a function is integrable and greater than or equal to zero, so above the x-axis for every x, then the area of the region under the graph of f from a to b is uh, the integral from a to b of f of x to x. So that's just kind of putting it into a theorem. Um, the reason we have this in here, the integrable thing is for later, so that's going to come up later. But right now, just know that this equals, here's the big thing, area under curve. Finding the Riemann sum like we did before is not super important, but this is. This is of major importance for the next three chapters. We're going to do a couple examples. The pictures are going to be nice. When we would never just make up a problem like this because you couldn't find that area without infinitely many rectangles, which is a real pain, as you discovered before. Um, so we're just going to draw pictures. So I have four little example problems, just so you can see how they work. Um, so remember what this is asking. 
Now, technically, there should probably be a little DX here that I always forget. We'll talk more about that later. But this is just asking for area under the curve. We're just going to draw a picture. So we go one, two, three. This is just a line with a y-intercept of three. It has a slope of one half. Um, so we can just draw a really quick picture. It doesn't even have to be perfect. It just has a slope of one half. And we're finding the area from negative two to four. So all that is is a little picture, right? So here's this area we're trying to find. That area looks to me like a trapezoid. If you don't see it as a trapezoid, trapezoid parallel sides. It's also, I believe, a triangle and a rectangle. <laughs> all right, so you could add those up. Uh, area formula for a trapezoid, in case you forget, is 1 half times the height times base 1 plus base 2. So this height right here, or the two bases, sorry. This is the height right there, yeah? So the height is six. So one half times the six. Uh, the first base is what you get when you plug negative two into the equation. One half times negative two is negative one plus three is two. So the first base is two. Plug in four over here, uh, two plus three is five. So three times seven is 20. So all you're going to do in these problems is draw a picture. Just draw a picture, find there. It's going to be circles, semicircles, triangles, trapezoids, rectangles, squares, shapes you know. Nothing tricky. You can't do anything uh, at this point except for the shapes that we know. So this one, um, y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared is the same thing as y squared equals 16 minus x squared. x squared plus y squared equals 16. It's actually the top half of this circle. Centered at zero, zero with a radius of four. So we're asking you to find that area from negative four to four. Use your circle, it's pi r squared. Radius is four, 16 pi, it's half of that. So it's eight pi, okay? Um, there's a, the same problem. Notice all I did was switch the limits. So remember that that's gonna be the opposite answer, negative eight pi. And then another last example is just four to four, uh, which is just zero. So the pictures could be anything. It's just going to practice your algebra skills, graphing some pictures, and then finding area under the curve. So remember, the whole most important, important thing for today is this right here, right? Is that definite integral for now is area under the curve. We're just going to draw a picture. If it's a weird shape, like a quadratic, it's not really a weird shape, but a anything, a cubic, we can't do it. We can't use this method because the picture has to be something we know. So we are gonna learn a, a different method which will come in two sections and we'll uh, make the connections and why we're using that symbol also. So a little bit of drawing pictures today and uh, finding some areas, that's about it.